I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. I want you to listen to me and I want to give you the option uh, to declare that what I say is not true. I want you, I want you to declare to be able to declare what I say is not true, or if you so choose, and I'm sure many of you will, and praise God that you will, many of you will choose that what I'm saying is valid, is true, is anointed, is of God. But I want to give you the option. I don't want you to feel that somehow or another I believe or I am, would be angry if you don't believe what I'm saying. I want to give you that option if, I, if I've made myself clear. I just want to talk to you. I just want to tell you what Almighty God has said to me. And I want to tell you what the Lord God Almighty has said to me over the past 43 years. And more specifically over the past 31 years since 1991 or 32 years. And that all is the land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. And Almighty God has sent me as his messenger to prepare a place for him to return to. He's coming back again. Everybody knows that. He's coming back again. And when he comes back, well, where is he coming back to? Well, simply by deduction, of course, you don't have to believe anything I say. You can go ahead and say, well, that's not true. That's not true. That's not true. But Pastor Manning, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. And I'll listen to you. And there are many of you will say, Pastor Manning, what you're saying is absolutely true. It is biblical. It's in, written in red. It's written in the blood. It's powerful. It is true. Praise God. And then once you do that, once those of you step over to that side, I believe that there's healing. I believe that there is and healing in all sorts of ways, that there is blessings and power um, on the order of Genesis, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 through 15, that Moses told the children going into the promised land as we are now preparing the prophecy land. I believe there are miracles, there are revelations, there, there are all kinds of beautiful things for those that believe, for those that believe, and for those that don't believe, there's an opportunity for you to believe, but trust me, I will not get angry with you, and I pray that you don't get angry with me because you don't believe what I'm saying, but I do want to leave you that option to be able to believe. Praise Almighty God. Praise his name. Now, there are several things that, that needs to be said here. Number one is that on, sept on 14th of September, 1991, Almighty God spoke to me at my usual prayer place about six o'clock in the morning. And as I was praying, I said the word by way of the Holy Ghost. I said, Atla. And the Holy Ghost said to me, now that, that's the new name that he has given for the community formerly known as Harlem. But he has changed the name of this community to Atla. And uh, later on, he told me two weeks later, the land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. But also in that first prayer meeting, on the 14th of September, and the second one was on the 28th of September. In the first prayer meeting, Almighty God said to me, Atla is a land, is a name and a word and a sound that no man nor angel have ever heard until he spoke it to me. Atla. Now, let me say something to you that probably over the, the length and breadth of time, the word Atlas, uh, Atla, uh, has been said or coined together. I think there is within the Islamic faith or some of the cultish faith, I believe, of some of the Eastern religions, but more Islamic, that was a girl named Atla. And uh, her name was pronounced as such, Atla, or Atlas, as a shining star or angel. And there have been others, I think, uh, the use of the com combination of those letters, A-T-L-A-H. But if you have been listening to me, you'll notice I never pronounce it as Atla because it isn't. The sound is what's important. Though there have been other words that have been put together that were spelled Atla, um, there, the sound Atla had, had never, that particular sound had never been heard by men nor angels to God spoken to me. It was between me and Almighty God. Now the rest of the world has heard it, but it's Atla is what it is. It's Atla. 
you will remember that in the book of uh, Acts is during the days of Pentecost when the 120 that was in the upper room received the Holy Ghost when he came in full force sent by Almighty God after the ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. You remember that the, the writer of Luke writing at uh, the book of Acts said it was the sound of a mighty rushing wind, a mighty rushing wind when the Holy Ghost came down upon that 120 as, as cloven tongues of fire. Well, when God spoke the word outlaw to me, it had never been heard by men nor angels. That sound, not the alphabets. That sound, not the alphabet. Prior to that, we have probably the most notable uh, sound of Atla is the Atlantic Ocean. It's a big body of water, great big old body of water. It's called the Atlantic. Socrates, or Plato rather, writes about from his professor and teacher and mentor, Socrates, Plato writes, that there was a city called Atlantis, not Atlantis, but Atlantis. Plato writes about his mentor and teacher Socrates, who knew of this city called Atlantis, and it was an almost perfect, perfect city, Atlantis. And then, of course, we have the world that word that is used. Uh, for global strength and understanding called ATLAS, A-T-L-A-S, S, not A-T-L-A-H, but ATLAS, A-T-L-A-S. So the ATLAS sound had been heard before, but the outlaw sound had never been, it's almost like you're speaking a foreign language, outlaw. You'll notice the Brits, or the British, they put various emphasis on words much different than we of the English tongue, and then Southerners and, and Americans, Southern Americans and Northern Americans put emphasis on words in a much different way than do others. And then Africans put, and when speaking English, put emphasis uh, and even in their own language. Atla is a heavenly language. Atla is a heavenly language. And every time you say Atla, you're speaking a word given in tongues and you're speaking a word given in power. Now, all of that's important for many of you who do not know the history of that introduction, but Atla, that's what God said, the land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. Now, you don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe. I'm not forcing you to. I'm not asking you to. I'm teaching. You're listening. You tune me in. You turn me on. I didn't come to you. You came to me. And so if you don't believe I'm not going to get angry with you, but you're going to miss probably the greatest blessing of your life. If you do believe, then there are all kinds of other blessings and assignments, and you need to get ready to come and serve in law and get this place ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I'm saying to you something that you partially are aware of. By partially, I mean you know that Jesus is coming back again. He's coming back. And I'm going to show you in a few moments, not just this moment. I'm not going to pull it up just yet. But I'm going to show you in John's gospel when Jesus was standing on planet Earth. When he was standing on planet Earth, he said to them, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And he was standing in the Middle East. He was standing in the Middle East on planet Earth. He was standing in the Jerusalem area. You don't have to bring it up now. I'll bring it up later. But he was standing in the Middle East. On planet Earth. And he said to those that were listening very carefully, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now, essentially what he said is that he's not going to prepare this place. He, he could have said, uh, it, especially for all of my haters and detractors, and I don't want to give them a lot of attention, but he could have said I'm going to prepare this place. I'm going to prepare Mount Olivet for you. I'm going to prepare Judah for you. I'm going to prepare the Jordan for you. I'm going to prepare Bethlehem for you. He could have said that. Surely he could have. But that's not what he said. Now listen to me very, very carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. Listen to me very, very carefully. 
He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Once I get that place prepared, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now, I'm saying to you, he commissioned me on the 14th of September. You keep listening. Just keep listening. Just if he had wanted to prepare Bethlehem, if he'd wanted to prepare Jerusalem, if that if Mount Olivet was where he was going to play, he would have said so. He would have going to said, I'm going to prepare this place for you. He didn't say that. And I'm going to show it to you in just a moment. He commissioned me on the 14th of September, the year 1991, to speak Allah, the land where the people should walk barefoot, because the land is holy ground. It's now the prophecy land. He has got me working over the past 31 years preparing a way. He went to heaven, sent the Holy Ghost to me to get this ready. So he's now, I'm not getting outlaw ready. It's Jesus is getting outlaw ready. And by the way, those of you who uh, were part of this ministry, and I, it, it is Holy Week, and we have made mention of the lost sheep, the lost sheep that's we leave the 90 and 9 and go and find that one lost sheep. I want to tell you what a, what, a, what a grave mistake you made by leaving the place where you had learned more truth. Listen to me. Listen to me, Elder Ramos. Listen to me. The place where the people who had, had been a part of this ministry before calling me a false prophet, they had, listen to me, Elder Ramos, Listen, they had learned more truth, more Bible, more history, more world economics, more geography, but truth, truth, truth. They had learned more truth by coming to the many worship services that we have, by joining this church, by sitting on, at my feet and listening to me teach. They had learned more truth. Then you can shake a stick at. They learned more true from me the short time they were members of this congregation than they learned from their father, from their mother, from their culture, from their country, from their kings. They learned more truth. Truth. Truth is what they learned from me. And then here comes Obama and the devil. He was not a legal president. He was not legally black. And they called me a false prophet. Now, Ella Ramos, think about this for just a second. They learn how could all that truth they learn from me? I mean, they got mounds and mountains and rivers and streams and valleys and fields and forests of truth, truth, truth coming from my mouth, teaching the scriptures, teaching the history, teaching the Bible, teaching the law, teaching the commands, teaching the parables, teaching the miracles, truth, 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 truth. Every time I opened my mouth when they sat as members of this congregation, every time I opened my mouth, truth, truth, truth. And yet here comes Obama, a phony and a fake, the son of Satan, pulling power the only son of Satan could do. And they called me a false prophet. He was not constitutionally the president, so he was not legally the president. He was not legally black. He was neither constitutionally nor racially the first black president. That, and now that is truth, truth, truth. But it gets worse. His mama was white, and he never did anything for you. He never acted anything like the most dumbest ex-convict prisoner, if you will, homeless man who would be given the reins of the government of the United States of America would have done a thousand times more for you than Barack Hussein, the long-legged Mac Daddy Obama. Truth, 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 truth. It's what you heard from my lips. Truth is what you heard. And yet one incident, you fled like the cuckoo. You fled like, like a bird. You ran as fast as you could, embracing and your racism, embracing the devil himself, embracing the son of the devil. You ran from the truth, 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 truth. Truth, truth, truth that I taught you year after year after year, Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, prayer meeting after prayer meeting after prayer meeting. Truth, 
Prove opening your eyes more than your father, more than your mother, more than your school teacher, more than the university. Truth, 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 truth is all you heard. Growth, growth, growth is all you heard and did when you heard me. And yet this one incident you call a false prophet. This one incident where I went up against the devil's son himself and he hid from you his birth certificate he hid from you his true race, his true father. He hid those things from you and showed you a lie. He showed you a birth certificate that was not one that made him constitutionally eligible. He lied to you. After all that truth, after all that truth, after all that truth, you believe that lie, and you ran from the house of truth. You ran from the house of the anointing. You ran from the prophecy land. You ran, 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 and you're still running. Still running. You're still running. Now, I use Elder Ramos' name because Elder Ramos almost got caught up in that uh, lie where the devil hid the truth. The devil hid the truth about his birth certificate. I couldn't get it. The devil heard the, hid the truth about his being black. The devil hid that. And because of the hatred and racism and so many, he hid the truth, but he was never the president. And right now, that same Constitution, the 14th Amendment to the Constitution that said Obama was disqualified because he didn't qualify constitutionally is naturally born. That same Constitution and the same Supreme Court and the same group of people called MAGA now to make America great again, that same group of people and the U.S. Supreme Court is hiding the truth from you. Then anybody that participates, that takes an oath to defend America and then participates in an insurrection against America is not eligible to serve as president. He's constitutionally ineligible. Right now, Donald John Tribulation Trump is constitutionally ineligible, but he's still running because the devil has once again, once again, once again, hidden that constitutional truth, that constitutional truth. So 16 years later, it's as plain as a nose on your face. It's as painful as anything that's ever been painful because you now know the truth when you ran from all the truth. And when I told you Obama was not the president, he ain't and, and, and never will be. You ran from that truth. Here's what I want to show you. I'm going to ask the engineer to bring up John's Gospel, chapter 14, and I want to show you something. If Jesus was going to prepare to return to Jerusalem or to Mount Olivet or to Bethlehem or to the Galilean Sea or to Nazareth or to any of those places within the Bible, he would have said so. He would have said so. When he got ready to send the children of Israel, first he sent them into slavery, and when he got ready to to uh, prepare the land uh, for the children of Israel. He took Abraham up out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees. You know it to be the truth. You know it to be the truth. He took Abraham, the book of Genesis says, out of the land of Ur of the Chaldees and sent him down into what we now know as Israel and told him to walk the length and breadth of that land because that's the place he's going to send the slaves when they're finally set free from the bondage of Egypt. And Abraham prepared the place. Abraham offered the sacrifices. Abraham prayed at Bethel. Jacob saw the angels walking up and down the ladder, going in and out of heaven, out of Bethel. That's the place he prepared for them. And then he sent John the baptizer just before him to prepare the place completely, make every crooked place straight, Make every high hill brought low and every valley exalted and every rough place plain. John did that. Now, if he was going to, when he, and when he came, he came to his own. He came to his own in the promised land. I'm saying when he comes back the second time and he's coming back the second time, he's coming to his own in the prophecy land. He's coming back to his own in the prophecy land. Now, I'm going to show you where Jesus said he's preparing the place and he's got me preparing it. I'm wondering when you're going to step forward, when you're going to absolutely let go of the bondage of your life, let go of the bail of, 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 if you will, iniquity that you're carrying called racial pride, 
called family bloodline, called denominational religion, called the huckabuck dancing, and all that nonsense y'all do in these buildings ain't got no nothing to do with being a church. <laughs> it's better, it's better, you'd better use it as a cotton gin than a church. All that buck dancing, all that jumping up and down and stinking up the place, getting ready on Sunday, and doing it on Sunday, by the way. Getting ready, the first thing you do, you get in and you break out, you start dancing. Ask the, what did the preacher say? You have no idea what he, because he's up there jiggling and dancing. And it's an outright Sunday, Sunday noonday, if you will, club, music club is what it is for some of y'all. Talking about the church. Listen, if Jesus wanted to come back to Mount Olivet or to Jerusalem, he would have said so. I'll tell you, I'll show you what he said. In John's Gospel, chapter 14, verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Is that right? In my Father's house are many mansions. And were it not so, I would have told you. Now, we have to understand something here, Elder Smith. When God said, in my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. See, what the preachers have done, and not blasphemously, uh, Elder Butler, or Elder Butler, or Elder Butler, or Elder Nimrod, if, if what the Lord was saying here in my father's house, he wasn't talking about heaven. No, he could have said in heaven there are many mansions. Don't you think he was wise enough, scholarly enough, trained enough, Elder Butler, Elder Nimrod, Elder Smith, don't you think, don't you think, I very seldom call Elder LaFleur and Elder Salem, I very seldom call their names, but everybody, everybody, Evangelist Brown, let me call your name. Let me ask you a question. Don't you think if the Lord wanted to say that in heaven there are many mansions, and that's what the preacher's been preaching, is that right? But that's not what it says, Evangelist Brown. That's not what it says. It says, in my father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I would have told you. And one of those mansions is Atla. So I go to prepare a place for you. Don't you see? Can't you see? Will you see? Will you open your eyes? Will you open your ears? Outlaw, that's what God said. And for many years, what the preachers have done, they have intimated that this is heaven. And if it were not so, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may. In other words, so he's got me here. Now, you don't have to believe me, but I ask that you do. But I give you the option to Pastor Manny, you're just a liar. And I just come to listen to you lie every day. And I just do what I want to do. I don't plan to do anything you ask me to do. I don't plan to do anything you instruct me to do. I don't plan to do it. But I just come to listen to you, Pastor Manning, because I'm probably one of the biggest fools that ever lived. I come to listen to you because I know you speak the truth. But I got so much devil in me. I got so much hell in me. I got so much jealousy in me. I got so much hate in me. I won't do anything to better myself. I hear you speak the truth, and quite frankly, I need to hear it, but I won't do anything to better. I got so much devil. That devil is fighting in me. He won't let me do anything. He won't let me follow your instructions. I got so much devil in me. He is tearing me apart, Pastor Man. but I drag myself to listen to you every day, but I ain't going to do nothing. The devil won't let me do nothing, you tell. He won't let me follow your instructions. Well, I understand that, too. I do. But listen, everybody, everybody, in my father's house, which is, can be right here at Atla, and there are many mansions right here. I've told y'all over and over and over and over again that when Jesus leaves heaven on uh, uh, Matthew's gospel, chapter 24, verse 29, he's locking the door, bringing all the angels with him. The Bible tells us that heaven is not the Lord's house. <laughs> Heaven is not the Lord's house. Heaven is his, is his throne. That's where he sits down. But that ain't his house. And that ain't the place he's talking about where the mansions are. 
That ain't the place that he's talking about where the mansions are. He says, in my father's house, I mean, man, and one of those houses is right here in Atla, Atla, the house of Atla. Now you got all these devils and demons and all these other perverts and all these queers up here and all these racist people up here occupying this land, but I'm going to clean it up. But aren't you blessed today? I'm not the preachers of old. Many of them are men of integrity, men of goodwill. God didn't reveal to them what I'm just what you just been revealed to you today. God didn't reveal thing number one that if the Lord was going to come back to Jerusalem, He would have told them. He didn't. God didn't reveal that, so you can't blame somebody for something that God didn't reveal to them. But you see, the, the Lord has given me the Holy Ghost, and because He's given me the assignment, He has also given me the understanding. In my father's house, not in heaven, not in many mansions. That is what it is. And I've heard people say that. Not in heaven. No. In my father's house. Heaven is what? Well, heaven is his foot. Heaven is his throne. I told y'all before. I thought you were listening. I told y'all before. Oh, before is the word. I told y'all. I told you that God existed in an existence and he created heaven and earth all in the, the first words, the first 12 words of the Bible in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, is that God created the heaven and the earth. Heaven is not his house. Heaven is not his home. Heaven is his, is his throne. Now, the preachers have been preaching otherwise. They're not mean-spirited people, and I welcome them. But it wasn't time for that to be revealed. This is being revealed to you so you can now make a decision if you're going to stop letting the devil, is stop letting the devil well up in you in such degrees and not humble yourself to the Honorable James David Manning and the things that he is saying and the truth and get in line with what God's saying. And now you don't have to because if you're not chosen and God didn't call you, then it don't make no difference. But he says, now I'm going to prepare a place where he went back to wherever his home was, and he, he then sent the Holy Ghost to talk to me. He sent the Holy Ghost to talk to me. He sent the Holy Ghost to talk to me to, to prepare a place for you. I'm talking to everybody who's got an ear, let him hear. And he says, I will come again. And let me, let me, let me state here, saying he'll come again, that he will come again to Atla and receive you here in Atla. Now, he could have said, well, I'm going to prepare Bethlehem for everybody. When I come back again, it's going to be Bethlehem. Or when I come back, it's going to be Jerusalem. Or when I come back, it's going to be Nazareth. Or when I come back, it's going to be one of the cities of the Bible. No, he didn't say it. He could have said that. Why not? He could have said that, but he did not. Because that is not what he intended. He said, I'm going, and he's, he's preparing. He's working through me. Let me say something to you. Let me just talk to you. The Lord Jesus Christ is working through me. That is right. He's using me the way he used John the baptizer. When you see me coming, I don't mean to be boastful or prideful or any of those kinds of things. But I, let me say something to you. You can believe it or not believe it. But let me say something to you. When you see me, Almighty God is working in me. And anything you do to or for me, you do to and for the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a complete captive of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a complete Disciple, I am a complete sacrifice and sold out wherever you see me, riding or walking, sleeping or awake, talking or singing, moment by moment, nanosecond by nanosecond. Every time you see me, you see the one working in me. He has sent me, he has uh, anointed me, to prepare the place, and he's going to come again and receive you unto himself. So please know that. By the way, I had to come to terms with that myself. 
about the Lord Jesus Christ. I had to come to terms with that because there are things that I could not do. I mean, I had to come to terms with leaving the, the, the Baptist power. I had to come to terms with leaving the political power that I could have had. I had to come to terms with leaving the power I could have had as a commentary on Fox News. I had to come, I had to, come to terms with the power of leaving what I could have done by being a, if you will, assistant or associate remotely for Donald John Tribulation Trump. I had to come to terms with all of that. The Lord wouldn't let me do it. He wouldn't let me. I said he wouldn't let me do it. And a whole lot of other things that they let me do and things that I do that there's no way that any other human can do, save I be able to do them through the anointing and through the power of Almighty God. So I want you to know that when you see me riding or walking, sleeping or snoring, it's Jesus in me. It's Jesus in me. Now, you may not believe that. You may say, well, I'm just another man. And on and on and on you can go. But I can tell you this. You've never heard any man talk to you the way I teach you. You ain't never heard no man teach you the way I teach you. So that's because, you know, Nicodemus, like some of y'all, went to Jesus, the Bible says, in John's gospel by night and said to Jesus, there ain't no way you could be teaching us the stuff, teaching the way you teaching, except God be with you. You know, but Jesus told Nicodemus rather than saying, okay, thanks for patting me on the back. He said, you know, Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter in. He can't see the kingdom of God. He can't enter into outlaw. He can't come into outlaw. He can't submit himself unless that man been born again. He told Nicodemus, Nicodemus went away. But that's right. That is absolutely right. There's no way. There's no way I could survive what I'm doing. Were God not with me? There's no way I could teach you the way I'm teaching you if the Lord was not with you. You don't get this from the devils that talk that prosperity, these filthy mouths that play with men's sexual parts and then get up and talk about woman thou art loose. You don't get that. No, this is the truth. And he didn't have to hear, let him hear. But by the way, let me say this to you just in case you're beside yourself. I want you to know that the whole lot of people heard Jesus teach. The Bible says in John's Gospel, chapter 66, chapter 6, rather, starting at about verse 53, Jesus had taught a good sermon out there in the desert. Good sermon. And then he took Andrew's a little boy. Andrew found a boy with a lunch of two loaves and five fishes. He took that lunch and prayed over and fed 20,000 people out there that day with a great big banquet. And then Jesus said, now, like I'm saying to you, sitting there where you're sitting, listening as you're listening, and been doing it for years in complete rebellion. I'm saying, Jesus said to those who, ate, who came and ate at his table, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't have no part with me and I ain't having no part with you. This ain't no deal where you get to choose what you want to do. You got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. The Bible says they all got up and walked away, just like y'all do every day. Just like y'all do, same devil, the same devil. So don't think that somehow or another you are uh, blaming this on me, the reason why you walked away. They walked away from Jesus, homeboy. They walked away from Jesus, baby girl. No, they walked away from him too. They did. 20,000 got up and walked away when he told them what you got to do. Here's my instruction. You got to do the Sabbath. You got to do the tithes and the offering. You got to do the dietary laws. You got to keep the commandments. You got to seek out the, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You got to do that. They got up and walked away and said, we're going back to the Baptist church. We're going back anywhere. We can sing and we're going back to the Pentecostal church where we can praise up and down. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise it. And we going, we ain't going to do all this stuff you tell us we got to do. And we ain't coming in on time either. We get to church when we get there. You ought to be glad to see us when we get there. We ain't coming on time. And we ain't doing none of that stuff you talking about doing. They did that to Jesus. So don't think that somehow or another you've joined some that you're special and that you that, that, that to do this, to what God's doing here in Atla. So Atla is a place he's coming back to. I thought I told y'all that. Outlaw, he, it's a place he's preparing. He says, I'm coming again. I'm coming again. 
So just because he said my father's house has many mansions does not mean he's talking about heaven. Doesn't mean he's talking about heaven. Doesn't mean he's talking about heaven. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've heard it. I don't know if you've been around the church long enough, but Jesus out of his own mouth used the phrase the kingdom of God and then there's the kingdom of heaven. Those are two different things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not heaven. Not heaven. Don't seek heaven, homie. Oh, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And that all these things that you have need of will be added unto you, saith the Lord God Almighty. But I want to be able to say that. So I've said to you the name of this teaching is called the prophecy land. The prophecy land. What's the prophecy land? Atlah, the place where Jesus is coming back to and the place where we're going to spend 1,000 years. We're going to spend 1,000 years. We're going to spend 1,000 years reigning and ruling until the new heaven and the new earth is ready. The prophecy land. Atlah, that's what God said. A sound never heard by men nor angels to God spoke it himself to me by way of the Holy Ghost on the 14th of September, 1991.